On January 20th of this year, change is coming to the White House. But until that day, it appears that President Obama will desperately cling to the status quo and continue to do what he has done on far too many occasions. To abuse his executive powers to put in place unpopular policies without the cooperation of Congress and then pretend as if everyone somehow supports him. The most recent case in point involves President Obama's recent decision to designate as a new national monument some 1.35 million acres of public land in San Juan County, Utah, the poorest county in the state of Utah, nearly the size of Delaware. This is a small county that's tucked into the southeast corner of our state. And it includes, and the National Monument is named after, the region's distinctive Bears Ears Buttes, which mark the ancestral homeland and sacred site of many members of the Navajo and Ute tribes who live in San Juan County, Utah. President Obama announced the Bears Ears National Monument on December 28th, right between Christmas and New Year's Eve, as most Americans were busy enjoying the holiday season and as he was still enjoying time with his family in Hawaii. That same day, his administration released an explanatory document that was officially christened a quote-unquote fact sheet. Uh, it was christened that way by the White House officials who wrote it. But in reality, it reads much more like an elaborate book of fiction. Of all the falsehoods peddled in this bogus fact sheet, the most egregious, and in many ways the most insulting, is the claim that the residents of San Juan County, including local members of the Navajo Nation and members of the Ute Tribe, supported the President's decision to turn Bears Ears into a national monument. The document says, quote, the creation of the Bears Ears National Monument in Utah follows years of robust public input from tribes, local elected officials, and diverse stakeholders, and draws from legislation introduced in Congress. In addition to protecting more land and water than any administration in history, and here is the kicker, President Obama has, under, has taken unprecedented steps to elevate the voices of Native peoples in the management of our natural resources. Unprecedented steps to elevate the voices of Native peoples. Nothing could be further from the truth in this situation, Madam President. Madam President, perhaps if we replace the word elevate with the word exploit, that sentence might apply to the situation in Bears Ears. Now, there's no denying that many Native American people supported President Obama's designation of the Bears Ears National Monument. But the inconvenient truth, too often ignored by the Obama administration and its supporters, is that virtually all of the tribal support came from Native Americans residing outside of Utah, not inside Utah, and certainly not within San Juan County where this 1.35 million acre designation occurred. In fact, the most prominent Native American group that advocated for a national monument in Utah is actually an alliance called the Bears Ears Intertribal Coalition, which is made up of several tribes. Most of its members reside outside of the state of Utah. And yet, National Monument advocates routinely invoke the Intertribal Coalition as the authoritative mouthpiece of all Native Americans in the southwestern United States. So how did a coalition of Native American tribes from Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico rise to such a position of prominence in a debate over a national monument in a remote corner of Utah? Well, part of the answer can be found in the cozy relationships between well-funded environmental advocacy groups, powerful outdoor retail <coughs> companies, and tribal organizations. Recent investigative reporting by the Deseret News shows how radical, wealthy environmental organizations supported by the outdoor recreational industry channeled millions of dollars to the Bears Ears Intertribal Coalition only after they realized that, quote, 
hitching their success, close quote, to the Navajo Nation was the only way they could achieve their long-standing goal of creating a national monument in southeastern Utah. The ability of uber-rich environmentalists to essentially buy a national monument in Bears Ears explains why the people of San Juan County, including the Navajo residents whose lives and livelihoods are intricately linked to the Bears Ears Buttes, stand united in opposition to a monument designation. For the people of the Navajo Nation who live in San Juan County, taking care of their ancestral land, protecting and preserving it for the next generation isn't optional. It's a sacred duty. It's part of their faith. It's part of who they are. The same is true in many respects in my own faith. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I share many of these views. My church teaches that the earth is a divine creation that belongs to God. This means that human beings have a spiritual responsibility, an obligation to God, to be wise stewards over the earth, to conserve it for our children and our grandchildren. The Navajo people of San Juan County have always faithfully fulfilled their responsibility in the Bears Ears region, and so have the Utes who reside in the area, caring for their homelands and respecting it as their forefathers did, is the cultural lifeblood of the Native American people of southeastern Utah. Take away their access to land, to their land, restrict their stewardship over the Earth's bounty for the sake of increasing the access of wealthy urbanites who use the outdoors for their own purposes. And it won't be long before their culture begins to fade away. The people of San Juan County understand this. They've seen their worst nightmares become reality in other Utah counties as a result of presidential national monument designations. That's why on December 29th, the day after President Obama announced the Bears Ears Monument, a crowd of Utahns assembled to hold a protest on the steps of the San Juan County Courthouse. Braving the frigid weather of that day, they gathered together to demonstrate that they, the individuals and the families who will be most directly affected by a Bears Ears National Monument, believe that the president has no business seizing vast stretches of land to be micromanaged and mismanaged by distant federal land agencies. But the protesters weren't just angry. They were resolute, confident about the future, and determined to keep fighting for their right to participate in the management of the land in their community, the land that most directly affects them. Of course, environmentalists and national monument advocates want the people of San Juan County to believe that this fight is simply over, that they've lost, that there's nothing they can do about something that affects them in a very real, very personal, very intimate way. In their view, President Obama's proclamation of the Bears Ears National Monument is permanent. It's irreversible, as if it were carved into stone. As one White House officially, uh, official recently told the Washington Post, quote, we do not see that the Trump administration has authority to undo this, close quote. But, Madam President, they say this only because they're not looking hard enough. The truth is, what can be done through unilateral executive action can also be undone the same way. Such is the impermanence of executive power in our constitutional republic, where major policy changes require broad consensus, forged through legislative compromise to endure the test of time. In a recent Wall Street Journal article, two prominent constitutional scholars, Todd Gaziano and John Yu, Explain this point as it relates specifically to President Obama's use of the Antiquities Act to designate the Bears Ears National Monument. The Antiquities Act of 1906, as they explain, does not create an irreversible monument. When a president uses it, its use is not necessarily indelible. 
Gaziano and you write uh, that, quote, after studying the president's legal authority under the Antiquities Act, we conclude that the president can rescind monument designations. The law's text and original purposes strongly support a president's ability to unilaterally correct his predecessor's abuses, close quote. In other words, Madam President, starting on January 20th, President-elect Trump can use his executive powers to rescind President Obama's designation of the Bears Ears National Monument. And I've asked the future Trump administration to do precisely that. I've also recently co-sponsored Senator Murkowski's bill, the Improved National Monument Designation Process Act, which would require all future presidents to obtain congressional and state approval prior to designating a national monument. I've done these things, Madam President, and I'll do more because I believe the preponderance of evidence proves that President Obama abused his powers, the powers granted to him under the Antiquities Act in designating the Bears Ears National Monument. This isn't just my opinion. It's the opinion of most of my fellow Utahns, including those patriots who assembled on the county courthouse steps in the rural town of Monticello on December 29th. These are the people who were ignored by the Obama administration. These are the people who were cut out of the decision-making process that produced this particular National Monument designation. These are the voices that were stifled by the wealthy, out-of-state, well-connected environmental groups that spent millions of dollars to lock up our land for their exclusive use. So it's fitting to let one of them, one of the residents of San Juan County, have the last word today. I think Susie Johnson put it best when she said, quote, Mr. Obama, you have failed the grassroots natives. A true leader listens and finds common ground. The fight for our land is not over. Your name will blow away in the wind." Close quote. I yield the floor.